Generally, upgrades are followed by the security going up in value or up in price. And although Alibaba is largely loved by the sell side analyst community, there are a few analysts who don't necessarily love the security. Well, there's one less analyst that doesn't necessarily love the stock as Alibaba recently got upgraded. And that's what we're gonna cover in this video. So guys, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, and drop a meow in the chat. You're watching more money, let's get it. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where the goal here is to help at least a thousand people achieve financial independence much sooner. And this one's an interesting one because Bernstein just upgraded Alibaba and they said that winter is ending for the Chinese tech giant. And what's happening here is that analyst Robin Zhu raised his rating for Alibaba shares to outperform from market perform. So that's basically going from a buy to a strong buy and lifted his price target to $130 per share. So that's very strong. And he said that live streaming e-commerce giants are still between 12 and 18 months away from slowing down. But even if that happens, the company's GMV share can go back into that 20% range. But I don't really understand that last comment. What does he mean by their GMV range going back to that 20% range? Well, I'm gonna make a guess here. Before we get started on what my guess is, just note that GMV just equals the sales price of the goods times the number of goods. So, you know, if the sales price of goods is going down, but you're selling more goods, your GMV would largely stay the same or opposite. So my guess is that the analysts could mean two things. One, GMV is declining right now for the whole industry. So Alibaba maintains its share. So that could be one thing. I don't think that'd be good for the ultimate valuation. So I don't think that's what he means because he just upgraded. And so I think it's that second point where I think he believes that it could mean that higher prices due to inflationary impacts can offset declines in volumes. And that was one of the reasons for the thesis behind Alibaba. Because it's a market, it's automatically hedged to inflation. So if there's higher costs due to fuel costs, manufacturing costs, higher wages, well, that's going to get reflected on the exchange. And so Alibaba, although might be exchanging fewer number of products over the exchange, the higher prices could offset that in part or actually grow gross market value. And the third area could potentially be, and I didn't write it down here, is that more people in this environment might be choosing to trade on the Alibaba platforms. And so that's how they maintain their GMV. So I don't exactly know what he's referring to there, but it's always fun to speculate. And that's kind of where I'm falling. Now, Zoo also noted that Ant is likely to see an initial public offering soon. So my question is, does he know something that we don't know? Because I've been following this very closely and I don't see any indications from the company that they're going to be doing an IPO very soon. And this is what I mean. This was an announcement made last week that unnamed people have said that the company may apply to become a financial holding company later this month, paving way for an IPO. But the news outlet cited people familiar with the matter, so unnamed sources and there's no official announcements or target dates by company officials. So either the analyst knows something that we don't or he's speculating and that's it. Now here's something that's promising. He believes, the analyst believes, that 85 to $90 per share will stick as the floor for the valuation. And I think he's right. Note that the share price did decline as low as $76 per share back in early March. I was out of the country then and so I actually missed that dip. And it was very sad because the stock rallied, but the share price did go back close to that amount to around $80 per share. That's when I actually doubled down on the security. So I got lucky and I was able to see that and I actually made a video on that, which I'll link at the end of this video. Now, the share price recently did recover to as high as $122 per share but the recent headwinds in the Chinese economy have brought it back down to around $100 per share. So we'll see where the share price goes once again. Now, if the share price does decline uh, back to around that $80 per share area or even that $90 per share area, I'm gonna look to double down again. And so I'll essentially sell the same position where my net purchase value is around 70 bucks a share and the cash secured put is profitable if the shares are over $100 per share. So I'll probably be doing the same thing. Now, if you guys haven't seen that video or haven't seen exactly how I do it and why I think that's an interesting opportunity for someone who already owns a shareholdership position, well, I'll actually link to that at the end of this video. Now, where exactly are the analyst community falling? Well, the analyst community 
is actually has a price target which is 50% higher than the current share price. So the NS community is very bullish. Now, this analyst has a price target of $130 per share, although that's still 30% higher than the current share price. It's still quite a lot below the average target set by analysts covering the name. So there's room for him to move up his share price target. And I think if there's enough good news, he could do that. Now, just because I'm bullish on Alibaba and the analyst community is bullish on Alibaba and Charlie Munger is bullish on Alibaba and your grandma is bullish on Alibaba, doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't risks. And so I always try to play devil's advocate and give it to you straight here. And so there's three important risks that you need to consider. And so always consider diversification for your portfolio. So the first risk is that Alibaba may not necessarily have the clout in the cloud computing business that we initially did think. Notice that the state owned cloud providers actually increased their market share to 19% in 2021, up from 13.8% in 2020. Meanwhile, Alibaba Cloud and Tencent Cloud is starting to slow or their growth is starting to slow. And we saw that in the results. We were expecting 25% revenue growth and we didn't see that for Alibaba Cloud. Notice that their US competitors are growing in some cases 50% a year. So Alibaba is really slow in this developing market. So do they pick up or does the cloud business get favored to state backed providers? Well, we'll see how this plays out. But right now it's not looking good for Alibaba. The second risk is that there's growing risks in the property sector with home buyers beginning to threaten mortgage payment boycotts for incomplete projects. So what's happening here is that people paid for these homes and they're not getting them delivered. So of course they're gonna get angry and boycott paying the mortgage for these homes that they just don't have access to. And so the CCP needs to address this very quickly and do something more than just delete the posts on social media. And the third risk is that the CCP remains committed to its zero COVID policies. And so I made a joke in an earlier video and I'll just say it again is that this is very good news if you're a tourist and you're looking to have an authentic Chinese experience by experiencing a zero notice lockdown. And so it's a risk. The zero COVID policies have impacted their economy. And so we'll see how this plays out into the future, but these policies have caused havoc. Combine those with their anti-tech policies as well. And they've really crushed their economy this year. And a lot of people didn't expect that either of those would last this long, but they have. And so let's see how this plays out, but it's not all sunshines and rainbows. So tell your grandmother to stop being so bullish on Alibaba and Chinese investments as a whole. Now, where does my valuation sit? Well, I still think Alibaba's trading at a fraction of its $300 per share valuation. So there's lots of room for it to run. And so I actually think, you know, my current share price here is listed as 120. The real share price is 100. So this could still be a two bagger, and that's kind of where I sit on it. And how do you get access to this model? Well, you can get access to this model at the lower tier of the Patreon level. And if you want access to an epic live presentation each month where I reserve my very best work for, you can get access to that at the upper tier of the Patreon. And like I always say, there's never any risk to you because if you decide that it's not as much of a value as you thought it was and you decide to cancel, no problem. Let me know before you cancel so I can fully refund your first month's subscription. I don't wanna take a penny from you if you're not getting value from the Patreon. And the cool thing is not a single person has taken me up on that offer yet, which shows to me that the hard work and the late nights that are going into building out that tracker and the valuation models is really paying off. Now, I did mention earlier in this video that I did double down on Alibaba when the share price went up and then it came back down. And you can actually get access to all of the analysis. I think it's a great video on how to look at cash secured puts and you can get access to that right here.